This is the Ultimate Counter Strike 2 FPS Boost and Optimization Guide. I'll show you everything you need to do to get the absolute best FPS, increased performance, and the lowest latency for your system. It will work on all low end, mid, or high end PCs, regardless of your CPU and GPU, making it useful for all Nvidia, AMD, and Intel users. So let's dive into it. But quickly guys, if you want zero ping in any game that you play, then check out the Gear Up Booster from the link in the description as it provides you with the optimal network routes, giving you zero ping and packet loss in every game. So go down into the description and download the Gear Up Booster now. And now let's get back into the video. The first thing that you want to do is update your GPU drivers. Whether you are using Nvidia or AMD, you need to go onto their website. I will leave the links down below in the description and simply download the latest drivers and install those. If you are an Nvidia user and want to install the bloated drivers for even maximum performance, check out this video that I will link in the top right corner right now. It will show you how to properly uninstall NVIDIA drivers as well as how to create your own custom debloated NVIDIA drivers and install them. Once you have updated your GPU drivers, go ahead and open up Steam and inside of here right click on the Counter Strike 2 game and click on properties. Now that you are in the general settings, make sure that you enable the Steam overlay while in game is disabled and we will be coming back to launch options in a bit but before that we need to go into DLCs and make sure that Counter Strike 2 workshop tools is unchecked unless you actually use them. As for the workshops, go ahead and unsubscribe from any of the ones that you don't want to use or are not using. You can always go ahead and resubscribe if you want to use any of those but for most people I would highly suggest that you go ahead and unsubscribe from those. Doing these steps will not only save you storage but also increase the performance of your overall game. Now coming back to the general and inside of here, there are a couple of launch options that I want to show. The one I'm using right now is to actually monitor the FPS and you don't really need it. The ones that you do need are actually dash high which will set the CS2 to high priority within the windows itself to increase its performance rather than other processes. And the second one that I want you to use is dash Vulkan. So V-U-L-K-A-N and this is going to go ahead and launch CS2 with the Vulkan rendering API which can fix a lot of micro issues for you and it will be especially useful for those of you who are using an AMD GPU. However, this can cause a little bit of decrease in FPS for some people so make sure that you go ahead and test it yourself and if it lowers your FPS, you can simply go ahead and remove it from here. But now that we are done inside of here, you can simply close out of this. Moving on, go down into the description of this video and download the CS2 optimal pack. Since this is a zip file, you will need 7-zip or WinRAL to extract it so open it up and simply drag the CS2 optimal pack folder out of it. Open up this new folder and inside of here are a bunch of tweaks that we are going to be going ahead and applying in a specific order. So the first one that you want to apply is disable UAC right here. Simply double click on it, hit yes and then hit ok. Now after applying this tweak you will need to restart your PC so that it is properly applied. What this will do is make sure that all of the tweaks that we are going to be applying right now will work properly and will be implemented without any issues. Now that you are back open up the power tweaks and inside of here the very first thing that you want to do is apply the import power plan start dredge. Hit yes, hit ok. And now if you don't see this little battery icon alongside the Rec OS power plan, simply right click, click on refresh and then it should be there. Once you see this battery icon, simply go ahead and double click on the Rec OS power plan .pow and it should import the Rec OS power plan. Now I do keep updating this power plan so even if you are already using the Rec OS power plan, I would suggest that you use this latest one since it may improve your latency even further and give you a bit of FPS boost as well. Now that the power plan has been imported, open up the power plans and inside of here, simply under the hide additional plans, you should be able to see the new request power plan. Go ahead and click on it and you get close out of this. Finally, you need to disable power throttling which as I have said in many of my videos is a really important setting that can really hinder your FPS and the performance of your CPU if kept enabled. Because in essence, it is a power saving feature and we want to disable it. So double click on it, hit yes and then hit ok. Go back into the pack and open up the Disable HDCP. I recently made an entire video on this setting and I will link it in the top right corner if you want to know what it is and why we are disabling it. But simply put, it will lower your latency drastically and I have even shown benchmarks in that video in the smoothness of the games. So go ahead and double click on the Disable HDCP dot hit yes and then hit ok. Go back into the pack once more and this time we are going to be disabling the GPU energy driver which is a useless GPU driver service that keeps running in the background. So double click on it, hit yes and then hit it ok. As for the Disable Spectre and Meltdown, I have also recently explained what these are but TLDR, these are security patches that cause a lot of issues with your CPU performance, lowering it by a lot and these days these two settings are not even that useful since a lot of browsers come built in with these security patches. So that's the reason we are gonna be going ahead and disabling these. Simply double click, 
hit yes and then hit ok. For the disable memory compression, once again this is a setting that is supposed to make your windows better, however it does not work properly in a lot of machines and due to memory compression a lot of apps and games cannot use the free memory properly, so that is the reason we are gonna be going ahead and disabling the memory compression as well. Go ahead and press any key to continue and that's it, now you can close out of the pack, you can delete it or keep it, it's really up to you. After that simply launch inside of your game and click on the settings menu. Inside of here go into the video settings and for the display mode simply go ahead and set it to full screen. Now I am using windowed full screen because I'm recording this video and I need to alt tab a lot but when I game I always switch it to full screen and that is what I recommend to you as well since setting it to full screen will not only improve your FPS but also reduce the latency by miles. As for the laptop power savings of course if you're playing on a laptop you would want it to be disabled and plug in your laptop while you're playing this game. For the advanced video settings go ahead and open them up. Set the wait for vertical sync to disabled. For the multi sampling and TLSing mode go ahead and simply turn it to none. For the global shadow qualities you want to set it to medium because shadows in this game are really important and for the model texture details I would rather just go ahead and set it to either medium or low it doesn't really matter. For the texture filtering mode you want to set it to trilinear. For the shader details of course you want it to be low. For the particle details once again go ahead and set them to low. For the ambient evolution set it to disabled. For the HDR or high dynamic range as you can see that it controls the range of the brightness between the brightest and the darkest pixels of your screen. Choosing the performance decreases the quality of the HDR rendering but potentially increases performance and reduces the GPU's memory usage. So that is the reason we want to set the HDR to the performance. For the fidelity FX super resolution as it says that it may improve performance by rendering at reduced resolutions and then upscaling using a high quality special technique. And I know for most people they will want to set it to performance however the difference between performance and balanced is not that much to be worth it. So that is the reason I always recommend you to go ahead and set it to balance rather than performance. This is what has worked the best for me and a lot of others and will probably work the best for you as well. For the Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, if you have it enabled inside of the Nvidia Control Panel then it doesn't really matter, otherwise you want to set it to enabled, not enable plus boost because as much as I have tested, enable works pretty fine. Now that you have applied all of the best video settings, go inside of the game settings and inside of here make sure that the max acceptable game traffic bandwidth is set to unrestricted. And the second one that is the most important setting is to enable the developer console and set it to yes. This is what we are going to be going ahead and using right now to increase the FPS and get even more performance out of CS2. So now that you have applied all of the settings, go inside of the play, go into practice, select a casual match and make sure that all of these options are checked. Once done, simply go ahead and click on go and it's going to go ahead and launch inside of the game. Now inside of here, simply go ahead and open up the console. The key should have been listed where we enabled it but it is that tilde key that is just below the escape key on your keyboard. But once you open it up, simply go ahead and type in CL, then underscore, then show FPS space 1 and hit enter. It should now show you a little FPS reader right here on your screen. But now moving on to the settings that will actually lower the latency and improve these FPS. So for that, simply go ahead and type in engine and then underscore, then low underscore latency and then underscore sleep underscore after underscore client underscore take and then go ahead and set it to true. I know that it's a long command but I will leave it in the description so you can just simply copy it and paste it from there. Hit enter and now if you go inside of the game you should be able to feel much more smoothness inside of your game and it should provide you a lot lower latency than initially. Another command that we want to use inside of here is go ahead and open up the console once again type in r underscore and then full screen then go ahead and type in underscore once again and then gamma and then set it to 1.0. Now I know that a lot of people will tell you to either set it to 2.1 or 2.2 but in my opinion 1.0 works the best not only in CS2 but in other games as well. So this is the setting that I'm using right now and this is all on low settings. So now that you have applied all of these settings simply go ahead and restart your PC, restart your game and you should be able to see much higher FPS than you were getting initially. So yeah now that you are done here go ahead and check out this video if you want to improve your FPS and lower latency in all games.